You know, if you've ever tried to build a high availability server cluster, especially on a budget, you've probably asked yourself one very, very tempting, and let's be honest, very dangerous question. Right? This question, can this scrappy little setup actually work? It's the ultimate home lab dream, and it's the Hail Mary for every small business watching their budget. It just seems so simple, so efficient, but is it actually smart or is it just a disaster waiting to happen? And this quote right here, this just gets to the absolute heart of it. We're not just looking for the smallest setup that technically works, no, no. We're looking for the smallest one that lets you sleep at night. See, the goal isn't just function, it's resilience, it's peace of mind. So let's dive right in and tackle the most common starting point head on, the two node cluster. It looks like the simplest option, but trust me, it's often an illusion and a trap. So this is the idea, right? Two main servers doing all the heavy lifting, plus a tiny low power device, like a Raspberry Pi. Its only job is to be the tiebreaker, to stop something called a split brain from happening. That's when your two servers lose contact with each other and both try to take control at the same time. Absolute data chaos. So on paper, this looks lean, mean, and efficient. And let's be super clear here. This setup can work. It is technically a viable configuration, but, and this is a big but, you are living on a knife's edge. You have absolutely zero room for error. The second one of your main nodes fails or even just goes down for maintenance, your entire high availability setup is just gone. Poof. You're left running on a single machine with no safety net whatsoever. And this, this is the gut punch from the community, from people who've been there. An experienced admin just leaves it out there. Three nodes is the bare minimum you should even think about. And even then, they wouldn't trust it for a workload they truly depend on. This quote just completely reframes that whole two-node idea. It's for a lab. It's for tinkering. It's not for a business. Okay, now, if you're even thinking about using Ceph for your storage, things get a lot more serious. This is where the whole conversation changes, and the hardware stakes get much, much higher. So for anybody who's not familiar, Ceph is this incredibly powerful software-defined storage system that works brilliantly with Proxmox. It lets you pool all the drives in your servers into one massive, super resilient storage system. But its greatest strength, the fact that it's all distributed, is also why it has some pretty serious demands. It really does not like to be cramped. And this breaks down what room to breathe really means. First, you just plain need more nodes. The consensus is you want four to five minimum, so Ceph can handle replicating and recovering data properly. Second, your network has to be fast. We're talking 10 gigabit as the absolute floor, but you really, really want 40 or even 100 gigabit for that storage backbone. And finally, the complexity of just planning and managing the whole thing goes way, way up. Ceph is not a set it and forget it kind of deal on a small scale. So if two nodes is a trap and Ceph is demanding four or more, where does that leave us? Where's the real world starting point? Well, the community consensus points to a very clear sweet spot. Three. Three real full power server nodes. This is the number you see again and again and again. This is the true minimum viable cluster for real high availability. Not two plus a gadget, three proper servers. So why is three the magic number? Well, first, it creates a stable majority, what we call a quorum, all by itself. You don't need a separate little tiebreaker device. But more importantly, it gives you a spare. You can take one node down for updates or have one fail completely, and your cluster just keeps humming along on the other two. There's no panic. And funnily enough, managing three identical servers is often simpler than juggling two servers plus that one weird oddball device. Now, this brings us to a really critical strategic point. We need to shift our focus away from just hardware specs for a second and think about business impact. And here's the key takeaway. Production isn't about having some huge 20 node cluster. Look, if you have one critical application, the one single thing your business absolutely cannot live without, and it's running on a shaky two node setup, well, that is a production workload and you're treating it with lab grade resilience. The question you have to ask isn't how big your cluster is, it's how much pain you'll be in if it goes down. Okay, let's put all this together into a clear, actionable blueprint. Based on everything we've talked about, there are really two smart paths you can take when you're building out your cluster. And this table lays it out perfectly. Path number one is what we'll call lean but solid. You start with three proper Proxmox nodes. For storage, you use something solid like ZFS replication. 
This is cost-effective, it's reliable, and it's perfect for smaller businesses or anyone with lighter workloads. Path number two is all-in. This is where you commit. You start with four, five, maybe even more nodes right from the beginning. You build a proper Ceph cluster on a high-speed network, and you are setting yourself up for massive scale and performance down the road. It's the future-proof option. The absolute key here is to choose the right path for your actual needs, and don't try to mash them together, because you'll just end up with the drawbacks of both. So, I'll leave you with this final question to think about for your own setup. A node fails, and trust me, it will fail eventually. When that happens, is it just a routine event that your cluster handles gracefully, leaving you to simply fix a problem? Or is it a catastrophic failure that takes everything down with it, forcing you to fight a disaster? The number of nodes you decide to start with, that's what's going to determine the answer.